Uh, it is Taylor Bridges. Thank you for tuning back into my channel. If you will be so kind to like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. I'm reviewing Harlem season two, episode five. This episode is entitled Pride. This is a nice, fun, energetic, colorful episode. We're back at Quinn's parents' anniversary party. Camille and Ty have just revealed um, the results from the doctor. Ty is fertile and will start the process of freezing her eggs. And Camille has the opposite look. Ian walks up as they're discussing and they make up some ridiculous, lame lie to get him away. And I'm like, it's dumb. Here we go with this with Camille, but Camille always lying, always lying, always just making excuses and lying. But her dress was super quick, uh, super, super cute. And Ty's um, suit looked really nice. Quinn's mom is looking for Quinn. Quinn is still at home sulking. She lies and says the shoot was such a success um, that she's out partying with the Vogue crew. And as I said on the last episode's review, this funk that Quinn is in is not about Isabella breaking up with her. Quinn is unhappy with herself and seems to be very unable to understand and articulate her own identity and not just her sexual identity, like not just sexual. She's so unsure about who she is and what she wants. But honestly, all of them in the crew are. Um, is it me or does Camille's college course seem to be a bunch of BS fluff? All the scenes they show, it seems like she's not really doing anything. I wish the show showcased her character having more involvement in black culture, black studies and activism because this run around behind Ian is giving bimbo behavior. You know, I'd, watch, I'd much rather see her journey as a black educator. She runs into Jameson after her class and he says he's been texting and calling her with no answer. And it's like, yes, y'all are broken up. She's in a new relationship. That would explain that. What do you want? It was actually good news worth answering the phone for because he applied for grants on both of their behalves and they got the grant. It's $25,000 to put towards a presentation on the role of black mothers in society. And I'm like, finally, I got my wish about Camille showcasing her studies more so. And of course, I already had wrote those notes before I actually saw the episode. So, um, I was like, whoa, right after I wrote down, I want more out of Camille, the very next scene, boom. Um, I'm thinking this thing with her and Jameson, this whole studies project is going to take an interesting turn. And I'm almost, I am almost sure they're going to end up making out because Camille has no self-control. She's self-sabotaging and she's mischievous AF. But McKeel ends up turning down the opportunity, but I have a feeling she'll end up taking it after all. She literally has nothing better to do than chase behind Ian. So the least she can do is like work. Like actually, like she's just so calm as if her career is not like super on the line right now. Like mm. um, the plant shop owner runs into Ty and wishes her happy pride. And of course, Ty is being extremely expressive and ridiculous per usual. She's going to have to end up giving her half to her ex in the divorce settlement and it sucks but these are the kind of specifics that have to be worked out ahead of time like you can't blame anybody but yourself Ty you just never know it's better to handle these uncomfortable money conversations when y'all are in love and getting along than when y'all aren't feeling each other anymore okay especially as in Ty especially in Ty's case since she didn't if I'm not mistaken did she even marry her husband for love but anyways that's marriage one on one, baby. Protect your ass, ass. You came, you you came in very cavalier. Um, Angie has a place to stay for a few weeks, and she has uh, because she's going to be subletting the apartment while old boy goes to like a gig. He has like a gig, I think, overseas, and he needs somebody to pretty much stay in his apartment. In the meanwhile, and Angie has the new Hallmark gig, but Quinn isn't happy about it because they have an unhealthy codependent relationship, especially with Quinn being unhappy at the moment. Um, misery loves company because this is a huge accomplishment for Angie, a new place and a new gig. Like, plus Angie has been very celebratory of all of Quinn's successes. So I just felt like Quinn, that ain't cool. I keep my distance and reevaluate the friendship of our Angie because Angie has been bumming for a minute. And now that the tide has turned, 
You mean you tell me your own best friend can't even muster up enough excitement to be happy for you after you didn't been bumming it out and on like like at your rock bottom for a minute now? Like, I don't know, that's weird. It seems like Quinn was happier with Angie when Angie was a bum with all the time in their world with all the time in the world to be Quinn's emotional companion. Um, and that's whack. I'd never mess with Quinn the same if I were Angie. And I don't even care for Angie's leech and bum ways. But as a real friend, when your friend receives opportunities that enhance the quality of their lives, you show up supportive, period. Like, even if you didn't go help Angie move, you could still s express support and congratulations. Still, at the very least. Like, you was just whack, whack. Camilla's an idiot. She annoys me so much. Like, I am begging Harlem, please show her to be remotely intelligent at some point. Like, I hate Camille. And I can use hate because it's not a real person. It's a, it's a show. I can't stand her. She just never goes about things properly. She just self-sabotages horribly. I hate people like that. She reminds me of... I call people like that tornadoes. They, they come, they F stuff up, and then they just keep going. While you stuck with like the, 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 the damage done, they just go on and F up somebody else's life. That's what Camille, she's a tornado. Dr. Pruitt needs Camille to come to her house ASAP for work purposes. Dr. Camille needs, Dr. Pruitt needs Camille to um, pretty much help her with this situation she's gotten herself into um dr pruitt is clearly frazzled and upset apparently her ta aisha wasn't really from belize she was a white woman and she opened four credit cards under dr pruitt's name and plagiarized on a project she was responsible for so camille and dr pruitt have to come up with um have to basically do damage control so that dr pruitt's mistake isn't brought to light and I don't know. I don't know. But we go back to where Quinn is being pushy, is being pushy for Ty to come to the Pride Parade with her. And she doesn't really want to. She wants Ty to come to support her anyway. And it sounds like that's what Angie was asking of Quinn. But Quinn called her selfish. Like, Quinn, you're being selfish right now, too. Ty does not want to go. And you're trying to be pushy. And you're trying to be emotionally manipulative and all these things. And you won't even tell Ty what's going on. And Ty is like c clearly stating that she's not comfortable. She does not want to go and you don't care. Someone has jacked Ty's idea for queer, a uh, queer people of color dating app. And she thinks it's the perfect way to get out of paying Brandon by dissolving the business and starting over. And I'm like, I don't know. Technically, Brandon is only exercising his rights legally. You could pay him his money and send him on his way once and for all and choose to protect your assets better moving forward. Like, but it seems like way more stress by avoiding paying him, dissolving a business, and then starting all over from scratch and everything that comes with that. Like, I know that the idea of dissolving the business and starting over, it works in some cases, but I just don't think it's well thought out in Ty's case, my opinion. It's an emotional solution because she's caught up over the money. She's not even considering where she messed up in this like the error in her ways she's only pointing the finger at brandon so this whole scenario isn't a lesson learned yet that's what i'm saying like ty hasn't said i'd be like you know what huh i'm in this situation because i didn't protect my assets i got into a phony marriage to begin with um i didn't get a prenup or whatever 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 Th next time this won't happen again. You know what I mean? Like she's not, this isn't a lesson learned for her yet. So this is liable to happen again. Cause you know, that's how it goes for us. We gonna keep, we, we go, God, God keeps putting us same thing until we learn, learn better. So that's why I'm like, I don't think it's smart for Ty to dissolve because it won't like, she hasn't resonated with what really like what her role in the situation is. So I think that decision is actually super, super uh, emotional. Um, that's that. 
Back at Camille and Dr. Pruitt, Camille brings up some good ideas to pivot the research and Dr. Pruitt is like feeling it and I'm happy to see it. But then Dr. Pruitt gets a call from her daughter saying that she won't be able to make it for dinner and clearly Dr. Pruitt was expecting the daughter and she was visibly upset um, when she said she couldn't come. Then she gets a call to go down to the firing meeting because of all the drama that's ensued and Camille volunteers to take the blame. I'm like, you are so stupid. Like, oh, I can't stand her. She's so stupid. What are you talking? You, ugh. I hate people like that. I hate people that's like fake nice and fake sweet. Ugh. I have a, I have a coworker like that. Like, Oh, I would never do anything to anybody. I'm just so nice. And then when bad things occur to them, they're just like, why me? Oh, I just never bother anybody. I just, I only take the blame for things. That's not my issue. You know what I mean? Like I only try to make myself look like an angel or look all nice and stuff, but they want to complain when it, it, it doesn't work and, you know, when it backfires. And that's the thing with Camille. Like, you have this urge to do something nice, but those kind of gestures backfire. Like, she's so stupid. What, what if the punishment is greater than what you thought, Camille? What if this jeopardizes your career moving forward? At the end of the day, it wasn't your mistake. So, you don't owe Dr. Pruitt by being the person to take the blame for this. Like, it's packed with so much expectation, you have no idea. Like that, that's a kind gesture, but it's, 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 lo it's a loaded gesture. It is loaded. It's stupid. It's stupid. Camille is just less than smart. Quinn is drinking everything passed to her at this pride parade. And I'm like, that's so nasty. Unacceptable. That is disgusting. Um, but she spots her mom at the parade giving free mom hugs. Apparently Isabella invited her here. I'm like, that's weird. How does your ex invite your mom and neither the mom or the ex say that they've been communicating? That wouldn't work for me. What? No. Um, Ian is at Camille's place and sees her phone has some messages from Jameson about linking up. And this is a prime example of why going through phones is a no, no. You do not have full context. And, it's an, and so your mind is going to go, other, you know, all which away. And it's an invasion of privacy. Ty is at her black party thing event. It looks like a vibe. Just when she was about to announce like the dissolving of her app, she hears some encouraging feedback from some lesbians who found love um, in each other using her app. So she decides to keep the business running. And I'm like, that's a great idea. Like a great idea. Quinn is about to tell Ty what happened with Vogue. And then the crew pops up at the party. So then she tries to dodge them. And it's funny because Angie then is at the pride parade and her phone is about to die. So she starts to run to the phone, start to charge it. Next thing you know, every black person she passes starts running too. And it's just like a play on the fact that when black people, when we see somebody running, like, I don't need to, we don't need to ask any questions. We just like, let's take off too. We, we, we gone, we out. Um, that was funny. Then she like, while running, runs into Quinn while Quinn's getting kicked out of the party and then boom, well, then Quinn has the, the charger that Angie needs, which is perfect. And then boom, Michael calls, um, Angie finally that she was waiting on. So that worked out. I thought that was a cute scene, but that scene when Angie was running down the sidewalk and all the other black people, especially the first dude with the pizza, it was really funny. I was like, y'all look crazy. Ian ends up showing up to the meeting with Jameson in place of Camille. I'm like, here we go. And that's where the episode ends. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was a good episode. I'm really liking Harlem. And if, like I said, if you'd be so kind to like, comment, and subscribe. And check back with me uh, for the next episode of Harlem. Thank you so much. Good day.